In the name of the living God, who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So again, Merry Christmas. Now, I was told that um, there was just going to be a very, very small group and we could, we could worship in the chapel. But this is too many people to worship in the chapel. So I'm glad that we're planning, there was a plan to be right here. And I welcome all of you on this very sacred morning. So, Christmas is sort of a complicated time. I mean, it began with Jesus. And um, over the ages, went to Santa Claus. And then it's still a mystical time. People get emotional at Christmas. People have insights at Christmas. People have tragedies at Christmas. So one of the things that my wife jo Joanne and I do is um, we watch Hallmark Christmas movies. <laughs> and we consider ourselves as, you know, being rather discerning when it comes to art. I mean, you know, we, we, we like the classics. But we watch Hallmark movies. Do any of y'all watch Hallmark movies? And you know, you know what's going to end. You know what it is. It, it's always, it's always some sort of story of a, there's a little bit of tension, which, which requires courage, for the character to go through this challenging time. And then there's a, a tender moment, a tender moment, where there's some sort of reconciliation. You know, and people cry and they hug each other, which leads to a deeper understanding of love between these people or among this family or within this town, which leads to a whole lot of joy, celebration. And I was thinking the other night, okay, so it's a pretty simple story and we've, we've watched six of these movies and it's the same thing, it's the same thing just over and over, but you know what, it's sort of, I sort of like it. And then I started thinking, okay, there is courage, there is tenderness, there is love, and there is joy. And not in a single one of these movies have I ever heard Jesus mentioned. Not one. That's what I mean, it's a complicated time, right? It's, Christmas really is secular, as well as sacred, it is. Not Jesus. Jesus was not mentioned in any of these. Lots of the other things. Even Christmas carols were sung. But it was not the holy story. And yet there it was. Courage, tenderness, love, and joy. Well, where did that come from? I guess it's sort of a human, human pattern. But that definitely describes what we're celebrating this morning. It took deep, deep courage for Mary to believe that angel, you are pregnant by God. And for Joseph to say, I'm sticking with her. I am sticking with her. And for them to travel to the place where Jesus was to be born. I mean, think about it. It took courage to do that. Uh, they didn't have a whole lot of data to go on, and yet they were faithful. And when that baby was born, I mean, there is no other tender moment to be in the midst of an unwelcoming environment for some little, some little piece of life to be born, whether it's an animal or a human being or the Son of God. It's a tender moment. And it's at the center of our faith, that tenderness, not power, but that tenderness, which leads to an understanding among those people, Mary and Joseph and everybody, that what's going on here, like the shepherds, what's going on here is a whole lot more than the birth of a little baby. What's going on here is a message from God that God loves us, and God wants us to love each other. 
So, be happy. Rejoice. Glory be to God. Alleluia. See, isn't that fascinating? Those Hallmark movies, which are not great works of art, but they do contain, and this is not an advertisement for Hallmark movies, I'm just saying it's fascinating, it's just fascinating to me that there is that pattern in a secular context, and yet it's what we're talking about as followers of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Which leads me to another query. Maybe, just maybe, we can find a message from God and a whole lot of other places where we are looked. I mean, outside of the church building or in the midst of, uh, you name it. Maybe we can find God anywhere. This message of empowering us to be faithful and to let our hearts be open to be touched and filled and tears and realizing that yes, the message of God is love. I mean, really loving one another and be happy about it. Be thankful about it. I don't know what y'all are going to do the rest of this day, but my hunch is you'll probably be with somebody. It might be a family gathering or just a very special person or maybe in the midst of a lot of other people whom you may or may not know. But here's the deal. God loves every one of those people as well as you, Emmanuel. So as you encounter those others, whether, be, whether they be your loved ones or strangers, why don't you remember this message? Strengthen up yourself to engage that person in love. Realize that there is nothing more special in this world, nothing, than feeling love and giving love, which comes from God. And really celebrate on this day what God has done for us. Because not only does it enable us to do something for other people, but again, circling back to do something for God. One of my favorite Christmas carols is 112. 112. And I want us to sing that. I want us to sing that. I want us to stand. And I want us to make a joyful noise about this very courageous, tender, loving, and joyful song about our relationship with God and what God has done for us. 112.
Amen.